Good morning in North America, afternoon in Europe and Africa, and evening in Asia Pacific region. I'm Bruce Tatter, CEO of Red Cloud Securities, and I'm pleased to bring you Saul Gold today. Saul Gold is one of a few premier exploration development companies in capital markets. With its first mover advantage in Ecuador, the company is focused on the discovery and definition of world-class copper gold porphyry. Its most advanced project, El Pala, hosts one of the largest undeveloped copper gold porphyry today. On April 7th, Saul Gold made a major mineral resource announcement updating the market on its El Pala project. I'm joined today by several senior members of the executive team from many parts of the world to discuss these recent developments. On the line, I have Nick Mather, CEO from Brisbane, Jason Ward, Executive Director, Exploration from Brisbane, Ingo Hoffmeyer, GM Project and Corporate Finance from London, Ben Whistler, Technical Services Manager from Brisbane, and Eduardo Valenzuela, Study Manager from Brisbane. After the presentation from the company, there will be a question and answer period. Everybody listening on the broadcast may type a question to the company, and I will do my best to get to as many of the questions as possible. With that, I now hand the webinar over to Nick Mather to begin. Thank you very much, Bruce, and uh, welcome all of you to the Solgold uh, webinar. I'm not going to go through a formal presentation on the company. I think most of you are aware of uh, our project and, uh, and what we're doing and what we're aspiring to. Uh, we have received a number of um, written questions from a number of you, which we'll be uh, addressing uh, through uh, Red Cloud after I uh, give a, a short talk about uh, what we're doing with the project and uh, where the company's uh, headed to at the moment. So without further ado, as you're uh, all aware, we are in the middle of our pre-feasibility study on the Alpala project, which uh, under the mineral resource estimate number three, which we put out on the 7th of April, holds mostly in the measured and indicated uh, categories, some 22 million ounces of gold and nearly 10 million tonnes of copper. The importance of uh, MRE3 is that it confers a, a resource status which should easily convert into mining reserves when we get to the feasibility study, the full feasibility study, which we are uh, currently forecasting to be uh, ready somewhere around about the end of Q1 in, in 2021. There have, of course, been a number of delays that we're um, suffering as a result of the uh, COVID virus uh, infection around the world, which is hampering our field activity. So there have been uh, some delays to getting the pre-feasibility study completed and also then ultimately the, uh, the full feasibility study. But we are uh, on track as much as we can, and I'm pleased to say that we're collecting all of the data that's necessary for the pre-feasibility study and the feasibility study at a uh, full bankable feasibility study standard. And at the same time as working on the feasibility study, we're conducting in parallel the necessary work streams to put in place a conditional full financing package for the $2.7 billion US that uh, the PEA has estimated will be required to develop this project. In addition to that, we're conducting early stage negotiations with the Ecuadorian government in respect of the fiscal packages that we'll need to uh, enter into and agree with the government to allow the mine to be uh, developed and operate under a uh, fiscal framework that we agree with the government and we're getting the uh, various permits that are going to be required for the development of the mine and the associated infrastructure uh, going as well. So it's our strategy to uh, work on all of these work streams in parallel so that we can rapidly uh, eliminate conditions to the financing package um, very soon after we get to full final feasibility study, which will uh, hopefully be our, our targeted date of uh, around about the end of uh, Q1 in, uh, in 2021. 
Um, you will have seen recently an announcement about the progress that we're making largely um, at the hands of good work from our uh, GM of corporate finance, um, Ingo Hofmeyer, is also on the line. And it's important to note that um, these financing tools that we're hoping to use are closely aligned to the value of the project rather than the market capitalization of the company. We believe that the company is uh, very undervalued in comparison to the value of the project. So it's pleasing to see that um, the world's financiers and particularly the offtake uh, parties, uh, including smelters, are looking uh, very closely at um, at the project itself rather than just the market capitalization of the company. So we believe that that augurs well for the uh, re-rating of the company's market capitalization to somewhere near um, a, uh, a reasonable value at uh, full, feasibil full feasibility stage. We are... Uh, continuing to work as much as we can without field activity on the databases for our regional projects, which provide a pipeline of projects for Sol Gold to build the company after we get the uh, Alpala project up and going. Unfortunately, we can't uh, go and drill them or conduct field activities on them at the moment because of the, uh, the COVID situation. Uh, but they are, um, are certainly continuing to uh, evolve and we continually reprioritize them on the basis of the, uh, the latest findings, uh, either from field work or out of the database. So uh, that's where we are at uh, at the moment. We are working um, on, uh, on, on the uh, uh, conditional total project financing and that includes securing uh, up to $150 million to complete the full form feasibility study um, in a final stage by the end of uh, Q1. There's uh, a number of subsidiary work streams that are required to be funded as we uh, go down that path, including uh, more uh, uh, field work and drilling, mainly for geotechnical reasons um, at uh, Alpala, there's a lot of work going on on uh, uh, tailage storing storage facilities and of course a lot of work on uh, metallurgy including um, the, the uh, uh, crushing and comminution circuits that are necessary to uh, crush and grind uh, around about 50 million tonnes a year of ore. So we are planning this project to be a state-of-the-art project when it goes into the mining phase sometime in 2025. Uh, we're trying not to get uh, stuck in the rut of uh, designing it for current technologies. We're constantly looking at uh, ways of making sure that this will be a state-of-the-art underground block cave mine when we get to the mining phase in, uh, in 2025. So, uh, Bruce, without uh, uh, any more rambling from me, uh, perhaps you could uh, deal with the uh, questions that we've received. Absolutely, Nick. And I just uh, remind everybody, uh, we have lots of questions queued in here. Um, the company wanted to deliberately be uh, concise and brief so that we could take as many questions as possible. Um, so I have lots here. I'm going to begin with a couple. First question, Nick. There hasn't been a great deal of news out of Ecuador regarding, regarding COVID-19. What are you seeing or hearing in regard to this in-country? Uh, the Ecuadorians are taking the COVID-19 um, infection um, uh, very, very seriously, and they've uh, taken steps to uh, limit interprovincial uh, transportation. Uh, luckily for us, most of our workforce is um, in and around the uh, the project at uh, uh, at Cascabel and Alpala and the the Rocafuerte uh, base. So we are able to continue uh, to man the project and uh, continue our presence there and make sure that all of the essential services for the facilities at Alpala are 
uh, maintained. Um, the greatest uh, infection center in Ecuador is at uh, Guayaquil in the uh, southern part of the country and uh, there's no transport um, or travel between uh, that province which is uh, around about 600 kilometers south of us and uh, and Cascabel. So uh, we we haven't had any uh, cases reported um, on our project site um, and we're uh, working closely with the local governments and the provincial governments um, around Ibarra and Lita uh, to make sure that uh, everybody understands the importance of uh, social distancing and um, that that seems to be paying off uh, for us so far and, and uh, everybody's uh, safe and healthy but uh, we, we constantly uh, maintain a vigil on it. We don't want any uh, sickness or uh, illness in our uh, workforce. Um, we continually make sure that we downsize the activities there and uh, I can't tell you when it's going to return to normal but um, it's it's not in, not affecting us all that greatly but uh, it, it has obviously stopped uh, our field work. Thanks Nick. So the next question is the company considering funding further work by a sale of a precious metal stream? Uh, there's a number of ways of funding the, <coughs> excuse me, funding the uh, ongoing feasibility and exploration work in the company, particularly the uh, the feasibility work. And the, the most expensive for us at the moment would be just issuing uh, straight equity. Um, there's obviously going to be further equity issues in Sol Gold at uh, some stage in the future. We would prefer to um, minimise them while the market capitalisation is so low in relation to the uh, value of the project. Um, we are receiving a lot of interest from organisations who are prepared to uh, put up funding for uh, not just the uh, the construction, but the feasibility phases based on the value of the project rather than the value of the of the price of the company, and um, we're continuing to investigate uh, all of those uh, angles. Um, I can't be specific about what we will or won't do in the future, but uh, suffice to say that we are getting a lot of interest from uh, a number of different financiers using a number of different tools. Um, which range from uh, straight equity to convertible notes uh, uh, all the way out to uh, straight debt and including royalties and streams. But uh, I can't tell you uh, exactly uh, what we might do, but we are getting a lot of proposals and we're considering all of them. Ingo Hoffmeyer, have you uh, got some comments that you would like to add in respect of the uh, future financing options. Yeah, thank you, Nick. Um, I think with regards to the short term, as you said, as a broad base of uh, different uh, financial instruments that we can utilize. Um, some are pretty advanced, as we have outlined at the beginning of March. Um, we we want to close uh, one or the other in the next couple of weeks, and I think we're on track to do so. Thank you, Inga. Thank you, Bruce. <laughs> Thanks, Nick. Next question. We know there's uh, molybdenum in, in the ore at Alpala. Is it worthwhile cleaning it out of your copper concentrate? And will this be studied in the feasibility study? Uh, as I mentioned before, there's a lot of work going on on the metallurgical uh, work stream uh, for both the pre-feasibility and the full form uh, feasibility study. And uh, molybdenum uh, along with a number of other uh, bio or co-products from the uh, uh, the float concentrates is something that we're looking at closely. Uh, molybdenum commonly has a very valuable metal, rhenium, uh, with it, uh, which we're also having a look at. And um, uh, I would expect that uh, that sort of detail will come out um, with the, the next metallurgical study. 
Um, Eduardo Valenzuela, uh, the study manager, uh, can give you uh, some more comments in respect of that. But we, we can't go into um, detail about uh, findings that we haven't announced yet, but it is something that we're looking at. Eduardo? Okay, thanks, uh, Nick. Uh, what we can say is like in most Andean porphyry copper deposits, uh, as you know, you have them in Chile, you have them in Peru. Uh, molybdenum in Alpala is present in the form of molybdenite. And it forms a halo around the high-grade core. Um, now, the one interesting thing about moly in Alpala is that it's also, as Nick mentioned, associated with uh, rhenium. Now, rhenium acts as a partial substitute for molybdenum in molybdenite. Now, we have uh, in the samples we have so far in the metallurgical test where we have so far, uh, encountered some interesting um, interesting grades of uh, rhenium in association with moly. So what we're looking at, the approach we're taking is to look at moly not by itself, but as moly equivalent. So moly associated with rhenium, and that's what we're looking at, uh, uh, the viability of recovering that in an economic commercial way. In addition to that, I must say that uh, as part of the PFS, and we'll continue doing that during the DFS, we're doing a number of trade-off and value improvement studies. So one of them is, of course, the recovery of moly, recovery of rhenium, but also we're looking at a number of other byproducts, uh, by uh, even magnetite and potentially sulfuric acid. So we're exploring all the avenues in order to maximize extraction of all metals in the whole body. Thank you, Eduardo. Bruce? Thanks, Nick. Next question, um, and I know you guys uh, a couple of questions ago spoke about the various financing uh, possibilities. Uh, I, I'm sure you're you've been talking to concentrate offtake groups and smelters. Is a deal with one of them possible in the near future as part of financing alternatives? Uh, a deal with one of them in the near future uh, is possible on a conditional basis, and uh, it'll be it, it'd be certainly early stage and would require refinement uh, as we move to full form final feasibility. But um, uh, we wouldn't have announced it uh, unless we uh, felt that there was a good chance that. Um, that we could uh, nail a deal like that. So, uh, Ingo Hoffmeyer, would you like to comment more on that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think the important thing here to note is that these conversations with off-takers, which fall into two categories, traders as well as smelters, haven't started recently. They started in the second half of uh, last year. We have recently announced um, then the conclusion of the first round of um, a selection process with traders. Um, what was extremely encouraging to see that we got uh, 10 qualifying bids. Um, so instead of having um, a, a whole host of bilateral conversations without the process, the board has asked us to um, basically run a process and, and, and see what the demand really is. And I guess the, the really important points are we have a lot more demand for our product than uh, what we will have supply at any point of time of the production uh, of Alpala. And that even only from traders. And I think this is testament of a couple of points, which is on the one side, um, very favorable um, logistics uh, advantages or the log logistics advantages of closeness to the port, uh, port facilities and major trading routes but most importantly of the metallurgical qualities of the concentrate. It is a concentrate that in the first 10 years will be around 30% copper, between 30 to 45 grams gold and high silver content and, and very, very low deleterious materials. I mean, we are far below penalty level and we are very balanced in terms of the sulfate mineralization, which means that, our, that multiple smelters in, in China, in, in, in Japan, in Korea, can use this product. Uh, Indian smelters are very interested because of the high grade uh, gold content. Uh, there is at least a handful in, in Europe who can take this in and then of course in the Americas. So it's a it's a broadly accepted and high quality concentrate and this is why 
traders have been willing relatively early to start working with us on commercial terms and the commercial terms that we have received were in all aspects better than our assumptions under the PEA. Um, and as most of the listeners will know that also the, the point that is market related, which are the RCTs of the smelter itself are currently significantly below, that means more than 10% below our assumptions in the PEA. So we will probably have better payability. We will um, uh, currently we have better RCTCs uh, and we will probably have significantly better refining charges from from uh, from off takers. And this is from traders alone. Um, similarly, we have already started conversations with uh, smelters and have sent them samples. We have done quite a lot of testing. We had almost 2,500 samples of the material sent um, to ALS in Camps Loop. They have produced the concentrate. Uh, using the water from the site, so it's a pretty um, precise reflection of what we should produce. Smelters have actually run this material through their own laboratories and have come back and said, "What you have, they've also shared the test results with us, but have said, whatever you have given us is very much looking like what was in your published test results. Um, so I think this is encouraging. Thank you, Ingo. Back to you, Bruce. <clears throat> Thanks, Nick. Uh, the next question I've got here is very near and dear to my technical group, uh, my geo group at Red Cloud. Um, given how excited they are, ironically, for your non-Alpala projects, uh, I realize the focus of this call is Alpala, but um, any clarity on when you might be able to begin drilling your projects outside of Alpala? Uh, unfortunately, Bruce, no clarity at all because it depends um, critically on the Ecuadorian authorities' um, management protocols in respect of the COVID control. Um, I just can't give any clarity on that at all. Um, however, we are, um, I think, as we've indicated in announcements, very excited about the uh, Rio Amarillo project, which is uh, a very large uh, porphyry system with an enormous uh, capping system. We call it a litho cap that uh, sits over the top of it. It's only 30 kilometres to the southeast of uh, Alpala and um, uh, we will be uh, putting up uh, some cogent cases to the authorities to allow us to get uh, working there uh, sooner rather than uh, sooner rather than later and that would also apply to the uh, Chacal Porphyry and Epithermal Gold project uh, to the uh, uh, north northeast of uh, Alpala by about 40 kilometres. So uh, I can't really tell you when we're going to be able to get active on the projects in the southern part of the country. And they're certainly, from a biomedical point of view, a little more dangerous because it's down closer to Guayaquil and would require uh, a degree of travel in and out of Guayaquil. So uh, we won't be going near them till the situation's uh, a lot safer and more under control. But uh, the way the Rio Amarillo and Chacal projects are emerging, uh, we're not too concerned with that. We believe that the <clears throat> excuse me, the greatest expertise that we're developing is uh, in the porphyry area, and uh, um, that they certainly present the uh, the biggest value. Uh, targets and value adders in the case of a discovery for uh, Sol Gold. We've got a huge string of them and uh, both the Chacal and Rio Amarillo projects up close to Cascabel uh, will afford us um, uh, some early results as soon as we can get drilling again. Ben, have you got, uh, Ben Whistler, Technical Services Manager, have you got uh, anything to add there? Um. No, nothing really further to add, Nick, apart from the fact that uh, our team's ready to hit the ground as soon as the uh, social environment allows. Mm -hmm. Good. Thank you. Bruce? Hi. Hi, Nick. And I just want to mention to everybody, we're, we have lots of questions. Um, we'll try not to duplicate asking similar questions um, only when there's a, a different uh, way that they're being asked uh, or other uh, uh, facts of it uh, that may not have come out in the previous questions. So on that, um, another Ecuadorian question, Nick, should we be concerned about the low oil price and lack of tourism effect 
on the Ecuadorian economy and potential uh, related effects? Uh, no, we shouldn't be because um, it is simply highlighted to uh, the government how uh, critical it is that they develop a new main um, source of GDP for the country and the mining industry has long been identified as the uh, solution uh, or very great um, part of the solution to Ecuador's economic woes and um, we're finding that the attitude in um, all departments of government uh, is very positive and constructive. Uh, certainly uh, a lot of the groundwork has been laid by the uh, outstanding Lundin Gold team uh, but we're, we're uh, working closely with uh, government to uh, get this project uh, up and going uh, as quickly as possible. And they realise that uh, more than ever, uh, the mining industry is uh, very important to uh, the economic safety of their nation. Thanks, Nick. Um, next couple of questions are related to your mineral resource update. Uh, first one, with the 30% increase in the measured and indicated resources and over 60% of those resources <laughs> sitting at the measured category, does Solgold need to do any further drilling besides infill drilling in order to establish, establish a substantial LOM? Uh, or life of mine? Yeah. Uh, no, we don't believe so. I'm going to hand over to uh, Ben Whistler, Technical Services Manager, to provide you with a more detailed uh, answer to that question, but uh, basically the, uh, the, the resource is of such a high standard, um, very high measured and indicated uh, categories that uh, we believe that we'll get a very high conversion into uh, mining reserves for the uh, full final feasibility study. Ben? Yeah, it's interesting. Um... The question has says besides infill drilling, um, which is kind of inaccurate because in a way the infill drilling has already been completed uh, at the Alpala deposit, um, as exemplified by the large tonnage in the measured category, which is a function of a really close drill spacing for porphyry systems, um, a drill spacing of 60 metres covering the majority of the high-grade core and much of the surrounding medium-grade material um, puts us in a position where we've completed the majority of the resource drilling for the project. Now, that said, there's still a lot of drilling to be done um, for geotechnical purposes, metallurgy, hydrogeology, um, infrastructure, um, both on and off the site. So there'll still be a intense drilling program, um, but the resource is um, um, very high quality and uh, uh, at a point where it doesn't require any further work. Thanks, Ben. There are a number of other exploration targets on the uh, Cascabel uh, licence, but they're not high priority and uh, they're not going to make a critical difference to uh, the uh, uh, the development of the project, which will initially focus on the Alpala deposit. Bruce? Thanks, Nick. Um, next question. With a copper equivalent grade of 1.4% in the high-grade core and 72 and 0.72% in the measured category, does Solgold want to improve grades any further, or is, or is this enough for them to be confident of a shorter payback period? Uh, well, any management team always wants to improve the grade of their their project. The simple reality with Alpala is that it's so closely drilled now that uh, we don't believe that there will be any uh, significant grade uh, increases from resource drilling. As Ben pointed out, it's drilled out largely on 60 metre centres, which is about um, half of the spacing that a lot of other porphyry projects around the world uh, are, are drilled out at. So we feel way more confident about um, this than uh, some of those management teams must. And uh, uh, the the likelihood is that um, it, it will always be what it is 
at the moment, but um, the the confidence that we have in those figures is very, very high, and that's going to show through uh, in the financing deals. It's going to also show through in the um, uh, in the discount rate that's applied to the economic analysis in the uh, pre-feasibility and feasibility studies. The PEA was done at an 8% discount rate, uh, and we will uh, probably see that rate drop uh, when we uh, when we do the pre-feasibility and uh, final feasibility uh, financial assessment. So I don't think it's going to get richer, um, but it doesn't need to. Um, it's already uh, looking at around about a, a four-year payback, which um, is fantastic for something that has a 55-year mine life. Um, in fact, we think it's a financier's dream. And the... Uh, Inquiries that we're getting from financiers certainly endorse that view. Thank you, Bruce. Thanks, Nick. We, we have lots of off-take agreement questions. We've we've covered that, but a couple with a little bit of a different angle. Uh, the first mm -hmm. one, do smelters have an advantage in the discussions over traders due to the multitude of discounts, volume off-take, and cash investments that they can offer Sol Gold? I'm going to hand this straight to Ingo Hoffmeyer, the uh, GM of Corporate and Project Finance. Ingo? Yeah, it's an interesting question. Of course, there's always a lot of, there's a couple of commercial sensitivities here. Um, I think both uh, are being, both have their own justification. Currently, we look at them in parallel, and I guess this will continue for some time. I guess the major differentiator is, um, traders bring a lot of flexibility to the table. They are often more flexible also in terms of payment terms um, and can therefore simply more adjust to your circumstances, while especially the, the smelters that we have um, in-depth conversations already, that means uh, talking about um, off-take terms and really off-take contracts. Um, many of them, and they are well known, uh, come with um, financing packages, uh, input credit packages, and that, of course, is something very important for us to consider. Thanks, Ingo. One one other related question, um, and maybe maybe back to Nick on this one is: Does the improved outlook on the offtake side make Solgold want more to to go down the development route as opposed to a potential asset sale route more so than before? Uh, for me, it doesn't make any difference um, because the project's um, outstanding anyway and the interest that we're getting from uh, off-takers, smelters and traders alike um, is uh, is so encouraging that it just goes to endorse the, the view that we have uh, way more value to add to the company by uh, proceeding towards development with this project rather than um, selling it. Um, we can't, of course, um, always defend ourselves against um, aggressive takeover bids. Uh, we have appointed City uh, recently, who we believe are the best uh, resource bankers in the world to uh, assist with the pre preparation of, um, of takeover uh, defence strategies. Um, the, the best takeover defence strategy, of course, is to have the share price higher. Um, the best way to get the share price higher is push rapidly towards um, a feasible and financed uh, development, uh, and that's what we're doing. We are lucky uh, that we have a, a project that is large, that is rich, that is that has a high-grade core, and one that is uh, well endowed with gold. And the variety of financing strategies that are being uh, thrown at us, particularly from the gold financiers, is uh, really encouraging. Um, but it's it's a small window to what is ultimately possible for Solgold because we have geologically very similar projects littered all through the country. Uh, and that, of course, as I keep saying in public presentations, is a, a function of us jumping on the, the strategy as early as uh, late 2014, after we first uh, drilled into Alpala. So uh, the interest from, from traders and off-takers, smelters, um, 
uh, really endorses our view that we should be pushing uh, towards uh, development of this uh, project in uh, in Sol Gold Zone right. And um, I'm pleased to say that uh, it's it's not uh, it's not a nightmare at all. Um, we're getting some some very pleasing inquiries, and um, I think Ingo is uh, finding that the uh, conditional financing discussions are moving ahead uh, at a, a faster rate than we had originally envisaged. Ingo, do you have anything to say about that? Yeah, I think I think this is a, this is an outstanding. I mean, from our experience now, we can see this is an outstanding project and probably one of the very few independent projects around of high quality um, that will get into um, uh, ultimate funding, funding and then production. So from that perspective, we have had a lot of incoming um, offers and, and we're trying to put a lot more structure now around to really see what the market can, what the market can provide. Um, and every single exercise we have started has uh, shown uh, additional benefits from just um, waiting until uh, offers come in, as, as for instance, the, the process with the traders has shown. Terrific. Thanks Thank for that. Um, in, an, in a recent news release, uh, you mentioned that you expect to be mining Alpala in late 2025. Will you be utilizing Newcrest's experience in this area or will Sol Gold go it alone? Do you imagine that both BHP and Newcrest would want to be involved in the decision making? Uh, Bruce, I'll answer the last part of your question first. Yes, they'd love to be involved in the decision making. Um, uh, if they own the project, they will be, but they don't. Um, we own it. <clears throat> they are shareholders uh, and we do respect their, uh, their views um, from both a financial and a technical point of view. And we uh, try to maintain a, uh, a close liaison with them and um, any constructive suggestions or contributions that they have um, will be taking on board. We're certainly very uh, grateful to have uh, Craig Jones, who's uh, basically Chief of Development for uh, Newcrest, is in charge of, um, of PNG, uh, Lahir and the Wafi Golpu uh, project and um, has been heavily involved in the development of the, the uh, uh, the Cadia block caving uh, mining operation in um, in uh, central western New South Wales. So, uh, yes, we will always uh, listen to them. Uh, we're particularly interested in uh, in anything that can uh, come along that uh, helps to see the future for block caving. And uh, uh, their their advice and their comments is um, always welcome. But we're not. We're not going to uh, either beg for it or, um, or or have its absence hold us up. We're, we're getting on with the job. And uh, there are a lot of people around the world who know an increasing amount about block caving. Uh, we do know that um, having uh, a high degree of geotechnical confidence and hydrogeological confidence in your oil body is uh, critically important to... Uh, both safety and reliability in respect of mining rates. So we're uh, putting a lot of work into uh, that work stream. Eduardo, hey. do Thanks. you have any comments to make? Eduardo, yes, I think I, I think I'm okay now. Yep. Yeah. Uh, look, Nick. I think just to confirm basically what you said. Uh, Newcrest certainly have got a lot of experience. Uh, they've done a lot of work in terms of uh, Carrier East and, and you know other deposits. We do have a dialogue with uh, Newcrest in terms of technical level, and uh, we have uh, uh, benefited from their experience and will continue benefiting through the PFS and the DFS. But as you said, uh, we also have a number of not only external consultants that are doing the work for us, but we have a number of internal uh, consultants or advisors. For example, now we're working with SRK out of Chile. Uh, they are helping us as in-house in consultants. 
So quite in addition to the other external consultants, and uh, they have experience with uh, a number of the Codelco projects, a number of the uh, large scale underground block K projects in Chile, like El Teniente and now Chuquicamata. So we are uh, we are fortunate that we are benefiting from the experience of uh, the Australian uh, block cave leaders in, in, in block cave in being Newcrest, but also we are benefiting from the experience of the South Americans uh, and uh, through, through a number of internal consultants. Thank you, Eduardo. Thank you, guys. Uh, the next question is from a registered shareholder. Um, it was the company's intention to make an offer for Cornerstone Capital, and we were waiting on, for the offer document to be translated. Is this still our intention to make said offer? It is still currently the intention um, to make the offer. Uh, one of the problems um, that we keep encountering is being in uh, possession of um, information which, uh, while not finalized, is um, sufficiently material that um, it would need to be uh, included in the offer uh, documentation. So we're constantly having to update it and then getting it retranslated. <clears throat> you will all, all have noted that we uh, we had to do some amendments to the um, announcement about the uh, the PEA. Uh, that also caused a hold up. There have been a number of hold ups. It is still our intention, um, but we, we can't do anything about being um, uh, trapped by more that we know about that um, isn't yet ready to uh, announce the market. Thanks, Nick. Uh, next question. Um, current conceptual or feasibility studies that are happening, are these being developed in-house or with third-party engineering firms? Uh, they're being developed by um, us in-house in conjunction with uh, third-party engineering firms. So uh, we don't do anything by ourselves because we've got to make sure that it's done to a, a final feasibility standard. Um, so there is uh, a lot of close liaison with a number of uh, engineering firms that are providing uh, support and input and various sub-studies uh, for the pre-feasibility study and will be for the feasibility study too. So uh, we, we work closely with them. Um, the strategies that we come up for uh, uh, cave design, um, development advance rates and so on um, are collaborative. Eduardo, do you have anything to add? Uh, yes, just, just a bit on what you said. Uh... Nick, like the PA, the PFS, uh, as you know, is an NI43101 uh, document. Therefore, it's got to be independent. Uh, however, in saying that, as I mentioned before, uh, we do have in-house consultants that, uh, that uh, help in a number of specific areas, like geotech and, uh, and a few others. But in addition to that, we have a very strong um, in-house team. We are currently uh, engaging a number of people. We have strong backup in terms of infrastructure. We have, we are covering basically all the key areas of the project. Now, as far as the consultants, external consultants is concerned, uh, we have uh, recruited some of the main experts in the industry. We've got uh, Wood or ex uh, Amec Foster Wheeler, they are the lead engineers. Uh, we've got uh, uh, Knight Piersold. They are conducting all the environmental, the community, social, heritage studies for us. Uh, again, they're very experienced in Latin America and, and elsewhere in the world. We've got Itasca, who are uh, the experts in terms of uh, hydrogeology, geotechnic. Uh, we have... Um, a number of other consultants that are specialists in their own field. But again, uh, we do have a strong technical team in-house, but at the end of the day, like the PEA, the 
PFS is an NI43101 independent report. Thanks, Eduardo. Bruce? Thanks, Nick. Um, another question from a registered shareholder. Why is there silence on the Blanca concession when earlier this had Bonanza grades? Is this part of the development plan? Um, no, it's not part of the development plan. Um, there's silence on it because <clears throat> we haven't been able to do very much work on it and we haven't been focused on um, work on it. Um, there were some uh, access difficulties uh, and uh, we've we've simply been focused on the um, on the Alpala project. The Alpala project was uh, still something that the the market was demanding um, that we focus on. So we uh, we have been. There are still bonanza grades there. Um, we we just need to do a hell of a lot more work on it to to make any sense out of it. Um, one of the geological characteristics of um, epithermal gold systems is that they tend to be uh, structurally complex and difficult to unravel uh, and blank is no different but yes there are high grade gold values there and uh, it is something that uh, uh, we're keen to get back to. Thanks Nick. Another question from registered shareholder. Did Nick or Jason acquire shares as a, as advised on 11th of March? Uh, I wish we had. Um, unfortunately, we haven't been able to get board clearance uh, to do so because there's um, simply too much going on um, that's uh, materially sensitive. And um, we will just have to uh, wait until uh, that uh, information is um, out in public and um, and the um, independent board members um, think it's uh, appropriate for us to to do so uh, but uh, I wish I'd been hoovering them at 11 and a half or 13 P or whatever they got down to thanks Nick next question um, when can we expect the PFS uh, the current uh, schedule on the on the PFS is um, end of uh, Q3 this year, 2020. Thanks, Nick. Um, next question uh, from a registered shareholder. Will you sell Alpala to BHP or another shareholder if they approached? Um, there's two elements to the answer to that question. Uh, one is obviously price, uh, and the second uh, one is uh, structure. I mean, a, a board can never discount uh, anything happening, uh, but what I can tell you is that from a structural and a taxation point of view, selling the project is a disaster, um, and uh, uh, the company would be very heavily taxed uh, for doing that. So uh, it would need to be an outrageous price. Um, and uh, I don't think that it's very likely that a, that a major would do that. Um, and uh, the, the, the other element to the, the answer is that the, the fantastic cash flow profiles that come from Alpala mean that once we get this project going, we will have... Uh, so much money available to us to um, get feasible and develop other projects in Ecuador that uh, it's not something that I would want to give up uh, very easily. So, uh, no, highly unlikely that we would sell the project because um, I don't think they'd pay the price. The taxation uh, impost would be horrific and we would miss out on such a tremendous opportunity to provide ongoing financing for the development of Sol Gold's other projects. Thanks, Nick. Um, might be difficult for you to be specific on this next one, but uh, next shareholder question, what what do you think is fair value for the Alpala project and where do you see 12, Sol Gold in 12 months? Uh, well, 
I don't have a crystal ball, uh, but I think that there's a number of things that are going to uh, drive Sol Gold's future. Firstly, the copper market is inevitably going to return after the end of COVID and the world's economy starts cranking along again. I think um, that's an important thing to take note of. There's a lot of mines in uh, Chile, which is the, 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 the greatest copper producing nation on earth that are uh, suffering uh, declining grades, de declining concentrate quality, um, um, some very adverse imposts from government in respect of um, water access, uh, labour cost, and the, the list of problems goes on and on. So <coughs> it's uh, it's highly likely that uh, the Alpala project, the Cascabel project, in fact, all of Solgold's projects will become uh, regarded um, more and more jealously by... Uh, uh, financiers by shareholders and by uh, acquisitive majors uh, who who all have publicly stated that they uh, they need copper and they they want copper so I think that will uh, help to drive um, our uh, our future upwards uh, I think that the increasing realization in Ecuador that they have to get the mining industry going will also assist and I think in terms of what's the specific value, well, um, the PEA talked about a, a range from uh, as, as low as 2.6 billion up to, I think, 7 billion with a, a mean of 4.3 billion. When we get to pre-feasibility and full feasibility studies, we'll be using a lower discount rate, a higher gold price, um, and uh, as we forecast last uh, October, uh, some increase in the uh, in the gold recoveries. So, you know, I would think that the value of this project will continue to increase um, from a, uh, a net present value point of view. And as we get closer to uh, full feasibility and a development decision, so will the traditional... Um, uh, uh, proportion of, of NPV that's ascribed to net asset value uh, go up. So around uh, PEA stage, it would be in the 20 to 30% range in the uh, pre-feasibility uh, and, and feasibility areas. It'll range somewhere between probably 30 and 40%. So we'll have a higher NPV, in my view, uh, and we will also be ascribed a, uh, a higher proportion of that to our net asset value. So I think the the fair value, while I'm not prepared to be specific about what it might be, um, will certainly go up and the confidence levels that can be applied to that uh, will also increase. Thanks, Nick, for that. Um, one of the common uh questions that uh, philosophical questions is uh, what keeps you up at night potential polit political instability in Ecuador or low valuation uh, as you've cited uh, which makes you worried um, I sleep increasingly well when it comes to thinking about um, Sol Gold and, and Cascabel uh, commodity prices are going up the projects getting more and more robust uh, the Ecuadorian government is uh, getting uh, more and more dedicated to the construction of a sustained and, and long life uh, uh, mining industry. So, uh, you know, things like COVID, of course, uh, worry me. Uh, and uh, from an exploration point of view, uh, in the early days, yes, we did worry about uh, just how big it would be, but it we, we've got there with the resource now. The, uh, the exploration uh, side of it is over. We've passed that hurdle. So um, there's not much that, uh, that keeps me awake. I don't mind if uh, companies come and, and try and make takeover bids for Sol Gold because we'll, um, I think, uh, easily defend them. 
and uh, we've we've got one of the world's best resource bankers in city uh, working on it. Um, Ingo Hofmeyer, would you like to um, add some comments for that answer? Yeah, sure. I mean, um, I, I guess we can only come back to what we said before. There's there's plenty of demand for the product, and therefore there will also be plenty of demand for the financing. So I'm I'm not concerned that we will have not enough um, funding options available. I think it's becoming increasingly clear that there will in all buckets, that means debt, export credit, import credit, possibly very large stream, enough financing there to fund this project with a nice uh, buffer on top of it. Um, and I guess, I mean, it's not just about the funding, it's also about other critical success factors. And we have also added people to our team. I think maybe Nick to you, um, we have had a couple of key hires in the first quarter that will be important to actually drive value because that will be uh, the guarantee that we actually get there um, within the next couple of months with regards to uh, study completion. Thank you, gentlemen. Um, what is the likelihood of a 2020 divestment of Australian and, and Solomon Islands interests? Uh, pretty much none. Um, the Australian ones, we, uh, you know, we, we could, uh, we could farm them out, um, or sell them. The, the Solomon Islands interests have way too much upside. Um, I guess we could be, we could look at, uh, farm outs there, but just divesting them. Um, no. <coughs> Thanks, Nick. And given that, um, given that we're, we're, we're almost at an hour onto this, uh, webinar, I think this will be the last question we take. Four guys, uh, in Brisbane are up very late doing this webinar for everyone across the globe. Last one is the company's historic excitement with the Larica and the Provenir targets still the case? Or have other targets gone to the top of the to to the list of the company? Well, you know our uh, our list of prospects is like a bubbling chicken soup. There's always really good stuff coming to the top. Um, we just don't know enough yet about the range of projects that we have to be able to conclusively uh, prioritize them. Uh, you heard me talking about. Uh, Rio Amarillo and Chacal before, um, uh, uh, La Hueca 6 um, and Porvenir are, are still very, very uh, important targets, but they're, we're less likely to be able to get on to them uh, quicker than, uh, than Rio Amarillo. Um, I think um, uh, the, the projects in the, the Cisne Loja uh, tenement group um, are also fantastic. Um, there's one down there that is sort of 1.2 k's by 700 meters wide that has nothing but high-grade outcrops in it. Um, and uh, it, it's very difficult to be conclusive with the prioritization, but Porvenir and La Hueca 6, particularly Porvenir, are still um, very, very exciting projects. And uh, I think Porvenir uh, is one that we'll be able to drill um, quickest once we get rid of COVID. Thank you, Nick. And I think with that, given that we're coming up on the hour mark, I'd like to thank all the, the members of Solgold that have joined, and I'd like to thank all the uh, attendees of the webinar. We had a, a great turnout and a tremendous uh, number of questions that were posted. So thank you everybody for attending this presentation. Are there, uh, are there any are there any questions that have um, uh, come through to you live, Bruce? That we can address, or I'm I'm happy to keep going. We um we 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 have lots of lots of duplicate questions, Nick. Uh, we have gotten to a bunch of the live questions at this point. Uh, I would tell you that the the, the chat stream uh, is exceptionally long. Um, I can see if there's a couple of others that uh, that we may not have um, uh, uh, gotten to. Hang on one sec. 
COVID. Do you think it is better to get exposure to Sol Gold via buying Sol Gold shares direct or buying DGR? Was one of them? Uh, it's better to get um, exposure to uh, Sol Gold by buying Sol Gold shares. If you want Sol Gold exposure, buy Sol Gold. That's good. Good uh, succinct answer to this. Would there be? Would the board consider taking a more proactive, aggressive role in M and A, pursuing either a merger or using uh, script to acquire competitors? Uh, that's a really hard one to answer. Um, and again, I can't really give you an answer because we don't uh, have anything that we'd be uh, interested in taking over at the moment. Um, and uh, I don't think there are any competitors. Okay. There um, aren't any. There are, there are simply no other projects in the world that are as, as big or as financeable as Alpala. There are some that are bigger, but they're not as financeable. Another question on the live chat. You have appointed Citibank to help with your takeover defense. Are you expect any attempt before the release from the agreement with the other companies in October? Sorry, attempt by which companies? Uh, other companies, companies on your registry or potentially other ones. Um, I, I couldn't. I couldn't begin to uh, answer that one, Bruce, because I simply don't know. I mean, there, there are companies out there, uh, a number of them, uh, Rio's one, Barrick's one, all saying that they want copper. Um, and, uh, you know, what they do and how they do it, I can't predict. Okay. Um, I Nick, I think we've covered off the majority of the themes of all the questions. Like I said, it, it, there's, a, there's, a, there's a lot of people asking a lot of questions, most of them on a lot of the topics we covered already. Okay, thank you. So thank you again, everyone, for being um, on the call. We appreciate both the company's time and all of your investors' time, and everyone be safe out there right now. Thank you very much, Bruce, and uh, thank you very much to everybody who's attended the uh, webinar, and and thank you uh, for the questions, and uh, to all of the shareholders, uh, thank you for your ownership and um, and support uh, for the company. Terrific. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.